So when yeah. it comes to um, I'll Make Love to You, which is which beats the end of the road stuff, was this the first time that LA officially steps away from the production and it becomes just Kenny and yourself? And, and I did too. I didn't, I didn't, oh. Kenny did that all on his own. Oh, so yeah, well, how, people don't did... know that. I, I didn't work on that. Kenny oh. wrote, Kenny wrote, I'll Make Love to You. And actually, he called me for me to hear it. And he was in Atlanta. He goes, Here, I want to play the song that I did for Boys to Me. He says, They don't want to record it. And so I remember going wherever I went and he played it. I go, wow, it's beautiful. I said, it's a smash. He goes, well, boys to men don't want to record it. And I go, why? He said, they said it sounds too much like End of the Road. I go, well, they're crazy. <laughs> said, Do they realize what, what End of the Road just did at number one for 13 weeks? He said, this is the, the best follow-up. And so I think at the time, Kenny was saying, Gerald Busby, who was the executive at Motown, had to convince them to record the song. But it was a beautiful song. But no, Kenny did that all on his own. It was, he did, it was beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful but then, song. But yeah. What, I know LA left, but why did you then separate? Kenny wanted to, Kenny actually came to me and he says, and that's a good question because nobody's really ever asked that question. Kenny says, look, I'm breaking away from LA. I want to see what I can do on my own. If you continue to write with me, everybody's going to say it's because of you. And he goes, I just want to see what I can do on my own. And I said, okay, that's cool. And it did hurt. It hurt my mm -hmm. feelings, but I respected him being honest with me. And that's when he did, I think, Exhale. He did Exhale all by himself. Oh. He did a wonderful job on it. And so once he did that, then we came back together and we did Can We Talk? Uh, what else did we write? Some other things. So he kind of like wanted to prove to himself that he was able to do what he did. And I always knew he could do it because like I told you earlier, Kenny don't need nobody, you know? And I would tell him, I was like, you don't need anybody. You don't need me, you know? So he did Exhale, it was wonderful success, huge. He did a great job. And then after that, he called me and we wrote, Can We Talk? We wrote, uh, Always In My Heart. He had already written, I'm ready. Because After Seven was actually going to record it years earlier, but never did happen. So then Kenny and I started writing again. We started writing for his album, Grown and Sexy. I wrote a lot with him. Um, you know, we just started back writing again. Once he did that, that was that's kind of how it went down. And I understand that he wanted to see, just like a lead singer leaving the group, wanting yeah, to see yeah. what he can do on his own. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was a mighty blow to me. But once again, it made me have to stand on my own. So I ended up doing Drew Hill in my bed. Never make a promise with Drew Hill. I did Aretha Franklin on my own. I did. Uh, I work with so many other people on my own. It pushed me to go, you know, I work with Escape or Lisa Fisher. I work with SWV. So it kind of said, okay, well, let me kind of buckle my bootstraps and let me go see what I can do on my own. Because yeah. that's that was the only choice I had. So it, it made me even stronger and more determined. And now that did light a fire. When you asked mm -hmm. earlier, that part lit a fire because LA was off running a record company Kenny was doing Exhale, and I was like, damn, what am I going to do? And so I just started, you know, I started getting phone calls from people. And I go, sure, I can work. Can you work without L.A. and Kenny? I go, yeah, I have a contract, <laughs> you know. So it was really good. Then, you know, eventually we came back together and we started writing and, uh, you know, did some good records on After Seven. Uh, Timeless was a great album. We did a lot of writing for them. Kenny's album, Return to the Tender Lover, even though it wasn't successful, it was some great writing, mm. a really great writing. If you listen to that album, it's like, it's so good. Yeah. It's, it's so good. Yeah. You know, most of us would probably say, you know, because when I listen to, I mean, Drew Hill, um, you know, people, everyone's a lot of, a lot of our, my generation's favorite band. And you look at something like um, Never Keep Promise and, um, and In My Bed, and I, you wouldn't connect that with somebody who's come out of LA and Babyface camp because lyrically, um, you guys were always writing the sort of love songs and, and stuff. Right. And and that was a departure. So how did you then switch from you just spent all this time writing love songs and breakup songs yeah. to something like that? Well, for like me, that? I, I kind of wanted to do some different things as well. And uh, what I left out of that story was after I did Drew Hill, uh, I actually co-wrote it with a guy named Ralph Stacy and Raphael Brown. Um, and then I wrote Never Make a Promise. After that, I got a call from Kenny 
to come work on the Soul Food soundtrack. Okay. Because Kenny had written, because we're not making love no, no, no more. Oh. We're not even trying. So Kenny goes, hey, I want you to come work with me on that and do the backgrounds how you did on Never Make a <laughs> in Promise in, the- in My Bed. So that was <laughs> Kenny's way of kind of complimenting me without like, okay. complimenting me. <laughs> so I flew to LA and I worked on that record and another record with him. And that was successful. And we had fun doing that. So, uh, but yeah, we're, we're, we'll always be linked. We'll always mm. write songs and whatever. I mean, we're just, as kids, man, it's just, it's just natural. You know, everybody goes their different ways and their yeah. paths. And, but we know we have, I mean, we talk every other day. It doesn't have to be about music. It's like, hey, what are you doing? How's your mom doing? How's your brother doing? What are you up to? Oh, I just got off my bike. What are you doing? I'm headed to a meeting. Man, we're we're just we're linked. We have fifty year relationship, man. So <laughs> yeah. it's it's nothing but love. So he'll tell me something he's working on. I'm always happy for him. He just did a. He's got a great record with LMA. They re, kind of redid. Can we talk? Mm. Which is kind of cool. And I'm happy for him. And uh, so, you know that's part of my music as well. So it's it's all love, man. It's all good. Really I, good. Uh, last week I I spoke with Kevon and and Daryl mm-hmm. after seven. So I interviewed them. Mm-hmm. And and one of the things I mentioned to them is that, especially for um, at the Keith was the fact that um, there was one record, um, Natural High and Real, that he featured in because most of the time mm-hmm. it's 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 right. it, 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 yeah most of the time it was um, Kevin and Melvin and Kevin and Melvin doing all the yeah. songs yeah yeah and then yeah. and I and I said. And he says yes. That was Daryl. That just says, you know, and I'm going to give you a chance to shine. And what what was your thoughts thinking about, you know, giving a chance for him to 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 come out of the spotlight? In that, uh, it was just it was just a part I knew he could sing. That's all it was. It was a simple part. It wasn't long. It wasn't much. I knew he had a voice, mm. and I said, "You can do this part." And that's that's really how it came about, you know. And I said, "You can do it." And I coached him through it and produced him through it. He did a great job. It added a different flavor to yeah, them yeah. of having his voice uh, singing a, a little lead part. And because Keith's voice is really important to their background. We, mm. we use Keith more than people think because he, he has a, a nice body. If you listen to uh, Timeless, mm. uh, there's a lot of background parts that we had Keith singing because uh, he just has a body that kind of ties their, their vocals together. But it was just a part I knew he could do. I thought it would be fun. And he nailed it. You know, he did a great job. He gets he does well. I saw them not long ago in Philadelphia with Kenny at a yeah. show. And he gets he gets a lot of, you know, a lot of credit when he does it. Like yeah. Gadgets given out on <laughs> no, like, I uh, interviewed them the day before that show. So that was the day oh, before okay. that yeah, show. Yeah, it was a like... great show. I I hadn't seen them in a long time. So it was great to see them all together. Yeah. But uh but uh I, I miss the hell out of Melvin. Melvin is probably that second voice. After Tony, mm. man, that guy, that guy, man, that guy, Woo. the natural ability of Melvin just was so unmatched. That guy could just give it to you. Wow. He would, he would give it to you. And I listen to, I think my favorite song is uh, One Night. Uh, one Night when he sings, mm. man, still brings tears to my eyes. Cause that dude, man, he had a natural, he just had a natural thing. If you give him part, go, all right, all right, I got it. I know how I go. I got it. I'm like okay, wow. and he'd give it back to you and flip it, and you'd my be like, goodness. "Oh my god, yeah, just incredible voice!" I miss that voice. Yeah, miss that voice. Yeah, yeah. Hey everyone, I want to thank you for being part of Halftime Chats. Um, this new update is really about our membership, and I'm really excited to be able to fully launch the membership page. There will be things like full interviews from day one, as soon as the interview drops. You get access to it without any ads on it. Um, there'll be some exclusive member only videos that will just be some behind the scenes stuff and some other things that we will never be broadcast. Um, for some members, you can be able to get actually two interviews because we do have, I do have a backlog of almost two or th- seven or eight interviews that I don't even know when I'm going to be able to broadcast them. So you're able to get at least some of those up front. And um, and some some ex- some just behind the scenes stuff because there's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes that I have never been able to 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 talk about or release. Um, for everyone else, you know, the videos would still be the same. 
um, over over a week or a week and a half or two weeks, depending on how long it is. Um, so everything stays the same. The polls stay the same. The community chats, the community stuff stays the same. But I think with the membership stuff, I'm able to add a little bit more and invest a lot more time and energy in, 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 in really supporting the members. So I do hope you come on that ride with me. I appreciate the support. And um, this will just help me continue to invest in taking things to the next level. Take care.